Well, bless the Lord, O oh, my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. You know, I love the Lord. Oh, I truly love the Lord. I am so glad that you are here today. It's a wonderful thing that we come together and we fellowship, feasting on the word of God, sitting at the Lord's table, receiving all that he has for us. I want to thank God for all of our essential workers, all of the mental health workers, all of the health professionals that are there in this hour that numbers are rising and people are just so filled with fear. I thank you, Father, now that you strengthen those that have to go in and be in the midst of it and serve mankind. God, you strengthen them and take care of their households and their families, God. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Father, I thank you for the professionals. I thank you, Father, now for all the essential workers of Kano's, those that you have given me, God. I thank you, Lord, for how you're blessing them and their household, keeping us from all danger, protecting us from all harm. God, I thank you now and to each and every listener that's out there that you've got to get out and you've got to be that professional and you have to be the head of the household and you have to be the essential worker. Oh yes, I am praying for you too because I know that in this hour and in this day, we are up against a spiritual battle and what will remove the burden and destroy the yoke is the anointing of God. And the anointing is when we pray and we speak and declare his word. Matthew 11 and 12 says, from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, but the violent take it by force. Refuse to tolerate the situation that Satan is trying to place upon you anymore. Glory to God. Let the enemy know you will not tolerate what he's been pushing and trying to prevail against you with. Let the enemy know that you're going to decree, declare, and expect the word of God to come to pass in your life. Oh, I feel the power of God. Let the enemy know. Oh, you're going to give glorious, spontaneous praise unto the Lord. Glory to God. You're not just going to sit there and take it. Why? Because you're a frontline hero. Ah, you are a frontline hero. Every one of you, those that are in the natural world, those that's working, that belong to God, those that all of us belong to God, every last one of us. But I'm just saying those of you that are here, let me put it like that. Those of you that are listening here on today. Oh, frontline heroes. And I thank God for you. I just felt that anointed to just speak and declare the word of God because we're expecting we're going to end this year strong. Oh, glory to God. I said we are going to end this year strong in the name of Jesus. Well, I thank God for you. Oh, yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. I have a word for you today. And that word, let me tell you, in this day and in this hour that, you know, so much is going on that there's so little of everything and not enough of anything that, you know, you would say, I just can't, I, there's just no way I can give to the work of the Lord. It's just not there. Whew. Well, I preached a message one Sunday. You can't afford not to tithe. Yeah, well, I, I think I preached that message. If I didn't, I did it on Dash. You know, I have a Dash podcast that comes on 24-7. Whatever, whatever platform you use to get your podcast over, you will find me there. Dash with Carol Dixon. I'm on 24-7. You get a snippet, a little golden nugget that will bless you along your way. We also have the uh, Carol Dixon Ministries app, and we also have a YouTube TV channel. So you can go to YouTube and pull up the different messages. We are there with the word, and here we are right here on the World Wide Web as well doing the same thing. We are blasting the word of God because we know that in this hour that Satan would say there's not enough. Glory to God. There, it, it just not there. It is. It is in the name of Jesus, and as you continue to obey God, you can't be God given no matter how you try. So what's my message for today? Today's message is you can't outgive God. I want to encourage you on today because I want you to know you can't outgive God. Oh, I'm going to go to the word on it. Oh, yes, I am. Glory to God. I'm going to bring a few points here today from that very topic that's going to bless you. 
The first point I want to say is that, you know, God wants you to be generous because he wants you to be just like him. God made us in his image and he wants us to be like him. So much in this world tries to redefine and reshape your identity. But God wants us to be just like him. And in the area of being generous, oh, glory to God. I want to talk about how you can't outgive God. So when God tell whatever God tells us to do, he's got a plan because he's going to do more. <laughs> I'm not just saying this because I love you. I'm saying it because it is true. And you will find it to be a fact. That means something tangible that you can see, feel, touch. Uh, you'll find it to be a, tra a, a, a fact because truth is the highest form of reality and it will manifest itself in your life and become a reality. Oh, when you stand on the word of God, when you will dare to obey his word, God will do what no other power can do. <laughs> Let's get in the word because it's time for you to know. It's no time for you to pull back. It's no time for you to not obey. Do you know in a time that it, that you said, Lord, why didn't you ask me this a few months ago? God will ask you to give your best. God will ask you for a significant special offer. I know because he's done it to me. God will ask you for all he wants us to obey because what you have to realize, you can't outgive God. Whatever God asks you for, he's got a plan behind it. Well, I'm not just talking good talk. Let's go to the Bible, and we're going to see what the Word of God says. If you looked at Luke 6 and 38, and that's a very familiar scripture that you hear a lot of times, the New Living Translation, I like the way that it was written. It said, give, and you will receive. Your gift will return to you in full. Isn't that good? Press down, shaking together, and running over together. So that you can make room for more. Oh my God. Pour it into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Mm. God is awesome, isn't he? Okay. So what is that saying? You know, when you give, when you give from your heart, when you give like Jesus. You know, just just and, and to obey him, to do what he said, do such as tithing, such as offerings. Yes. Let me tell you, when you do that, God is saying right here, he know your goal isn't about blessing. Your goal is about obedience. And it's so wonderful to obey God's commandment that he told us to obey him concerning giving. This is the hour. I was sharing with some of my ministers the other night. This is the hour of the local church. This is a time that if you've never supported your local church before, it's time to support your local church. Your local church is the glue that is holding everything together in this hour. Glory to God. That local pastor is there praying for their flock. That lo local pastor. Oh, yes, I know because I am a local pastor. I know how that local pastor is there just praying pleading the blood and declaring God's word. Oh, and expecting God to move in great and mighty ways. This is a time that we must continue to obey God. And thereby, if Churches like ours, oh, people are working. People are moving into places. People are getting transportation. People are getting increase and promotion. People are writing books. People are doing great and mighty things. Oh, people are creating a fresh and a new. Oh, yes, that God has given them creative ideas and witty invention, inventions. That's what's going on in the circle around me. And I tell you, you know why? It's not happening needlessly. It's not happening by happenstance. It's happening because of prayer. Glory to God. That local pastor prays. That local pastor is agreeing with you. That local pastor is available to you. Uh, hey, hey, hey. That means something. And thereby, that local pastor, you hook up with them. Many of them don't have the avenues wherein we have. God has blessed us that we're able to not, we haven't missed the service, although we haven't been able to get into our sanctuary. But we have not missed a service. We have not missed a meeting. God has been good. Oh, my goodness. And in the summertime, we were out at the annex because I'm in Michigan. So it's cold now. We're not out there in the annex. So we, we continue to move. And we're yet moving giving our webinars and doing the, the things that God has called us to do. The local church. Whew. And God said, give. Give of your time, your talents, and your treasures. Give and it shall be given back to you. God said, I'll return it. I love this. In the full. Read that in New Living Translation of Luke 6 and 38. 
He said, press down, shake it together. Mm -hmm. Shake it together to what? To make room for more. Read it. Read it in the New Living Translation. And then what? Run it over. And then what? Pour it into your lap. The amount you give will determine the amount you get back. Oh, God is so good. I'm so glad God knows the heart. God knows when you give from the heart and want it to just want to just be a blessing. And when you do that, when you give it from the heart because you want to be a blessing, God will bless you. <laughs> he, he will bless you. That's what I love about him. You cannot, you can't be God given. You can't out give God. Now, all right. Sometimes, you know, it looks like uh, God is saying, uh, let me see. If you're going to out give me, talking about God, or you think you can, you can do it. You think you can do it. <laughs> And we, and then, then you see, and, and he's talking about I've given him to other people. I can remember when I first started my ministry and uh, my husband and I were so blessed. And so people would need different things. And so we would just start meeting the needs. We'd get mattresses. We'd help them do this. We'd help them do that. One day the Lord told me, he said, you know what? Let me be God in their lives. You just do what I told you to do. You pray. Mm -hmm. expect me to manifest, expect me to do it in their lives so they will see that uh, they'll look to me and not to you. That was a shocker because that was not my intent. But you'll, you'll be surprised how when you just want to bless people, you have to be careful that you don't get in the way of God moving and doing what he wants to do, that they can look to him. And then by way of knowing that you're there praying, knowing that you're there in agreement with them, but they'll know how to go to God. Oh, God is so good. And so, you know, God sometimes, you know, he'll say, you know, you think you can outgive give me? You think you can give more? That's where I got that from, you know, when you start giving to other people. But when you obey God, oh, glory to God, I'm telling you right now, if you try to, <laughs> I tell you what, do it and tell me who wins. God's always going to win. You'll run out. <laughs> you won't have the resources. Oh, but God always wins. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And he says over and over in scripture that you'll end up with more if you learn to be generous you'll end up with so much more so when i said that when you learn to be generous in other words what god tells you to do do it and do your best at it don't just well i'm gonna pinch off this because i gotta keep it no 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 do it and do your best at it you cannot you can't out give god i cannot stress that enough on this morning you cannot you can't out give God, whatever he gives you the opportunity to do, if you do it and do it to the fullest, woo, look out, it's a blessing coming that, oh, it'll be so full for the same measure. That's what the Bible says. The way you give it out is the way you're going to receive it back. Didn't, didn't you hear me say it? But I like this word that was in the New Living Translation. It said the way you give it back determines the um, determines the amount you receive back. Now, I like that because God doesn't do dollar for dollar. He does more. <laughs> but that dollar that you gave generously, you gave it generously. Whatever little bit we have, that's what it's indicative of. You do it generously. Do your best. And I'm telling you, it will determine the amount that you receive back. And it's always more. Why? Because you cannot, you can't outgive God. Oh, I can't stress that enough. Glory to God. This is God's economy. That's the way he works, the economy of God. Hallelujah. He promises that you will always end up with more. Hallelujah. He promises that. Hmm, you can't outgive him. Hey, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> ah, whoo, glory to God. Mm. You know, uh, sometimes those blessings are material and sometimes they're spiritual, you know. Uh, many times you you need what money cannot buy. Yeah, anybody ever been there? Uh, oh yes, and and they'll come from you having a generous heart that God would just heap up on you because what you give determines the way you give it determines the way that you give it back. God is so good the way God gives it back to you, and so we see there in Luke six and thirty eight. Glory to God! How He said He'll give it back to us, and Jesus says, "Give and you will receive." <laughs> 
That's what he said. Give and you will receive. And he said your gift will come back to you in the full. It'll come back. Oh my God. Press down, shaking together. Look at that. To make room for more. I just can't get off of that. <laughs> for the amount that you give determines the amount that you receive back. And it's not, it can't be any plainer than that. I love that. That's the New Living Translation of Luke 6 and 38. Okay? All right. Oh, glory to God. So, and, and I broke it down even more as I was looking at it. You know what I'm saying? It was saying, you know, Jesus was saying to us here in Luke 6 and 38. He's saying that God's blessings are the same. The way that God gives them back to us. See, when you give generously, God will give generously so that you can make room for more. <laughs> you give generously. Generously, You're giving it out. Here I go. I'm, I'm, let's see. You're giving out of what you have. You're giving out. You're giving out of what you have. But when you do that, God is saying, he'll give you back so generously because you have made room for more. And he's saying, what I'll do, I'll press it down, shake it up, making room for more, <laughs> more, more. Oh, uh, because what you gave determined what I give back to you. Mm, God is so good. And he gives full measure. That's the saying that God always gives. Full measure. Uh, Jesus, glory to God. So when you learn to be generous like him, always expect the full. Never empty. Always expect it. Because the way you give to others, God will give to you. I cannot stress it enough because he wants you to be generous. God wants you to be like him. That's point number one. You better know that. And you can't be more like Christ without learning to give generously. You know it. You know it. Amen. Oh, so he gave his life. Yeah. For you and I. What more could he do? Generous giver. Oh, oh. So in all that you could do, the greatest decision that you could make here at the end of 2020, and we're saying we're going to end strong. Yes, the greatest dis decision you could make is to know that the amount that you give determines the amount that you get back. <laughs> oh, glory to God. So bottom line, you control how much God blesses your life. You control how much God blesses your life. There it is. Think about that. God will increase you. And, and, and he'll bless you. And he'll increase all that you go about to do. As long as it has his approval. As long as we're obeying and doing that that he told us to do. Now, you can't go and put your money on all kind of ground and expect it all to come back. No, no, no. You want to get to the full? You need to begin to give. And one of the first places to start is your local church. I'm sorry. I have to say it. I'm, I'm really not apologetic. No, I am not. Your local church is where you need to start. Oh, yes. And a lot of people want to give everywhere but to God's church. God's church is where you need to start. And when you find a church where you see the word of God being preached, where, Jesus, where God is exalted, Jesus is, is Lord, and the word is being preached, and healings are taking place, and deliverance, you said testimonies come forth. That's some good ground right there. That, that and, and See, that's where you need to plant because when you plant there, it's going to go in that good ground. And Mark 4, 26 and 27 says, you'll plant that seed, it'll, it'll, it'll spring up and grow up and produce an abundant harvest. Amen. 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 Glory to God. I, I always, I'm from the South. I, I am from Tennessee. I was born and raised there. And let me tell you. A farmer, when a, I was not raised on a farm, I wasn't. My, my grand uncles, oh, they own so much land and farm. We go out there. I went out one day to, you know, they, they pick cotton down there. We didn't have to do that. And so I was going to go with them and, and to pick some cotton. I didn't make it a good hour. I did. My sisters, we, we would talk and laugh about that in years and years and years to come, you know, that I couldn't make it out there. <laughs> but I do know the dynamic about a farmer. Okay, and and if, if you don't, you, you will if you ever start reading the Bible because that's all God does. He, he talks about planting throughout the Bible. Oh, yes. And so even a farmer knows that seed has to be given away in order for it to be 
there to be increase. That seed has to be planted into the ground in order for a harvest to come. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. If you keep the seed in the sack, it's not going to do you any good. You've got to begin to plant it. And they would go get seed from the seed store and they'd have all seed. But it won't do any good sitting there. Uh-uh. You've got to plant that seed into good ground. And you'll get your harvest off of it. You plant it in the ground. And, and then, see, this is the point I'm bringing out now. When you plant that seed, it multiplies. That's what I love about seed. Oh, yeah. When you plant one corn seed, it comes back in a full stalk. Oh, my God. And you don't just get one seed back. Oh, glory to God. You get a stalk with hundreds of kernels of corn. When you plant a watermelon seed, you don't just get a watermelon seed back. You get a watermelon with abundance of seeds in it back. <laughs> oh, glory to God. A bunch of watermelons with hundreds of seeds. Come that one seed. <laughs> God is so good. God multiplies whatever little bit you plant. God multiplies it. Whatever little bit you give him, God multiplies it. When you help people, when you give of the wisdom that you have and share it with others, God will multiply it back to you. Oh, it just opens up. When you when you give generously of, the, of your finances, oh, your tithe, your offer, and significancy, or spontaneous giving, uh -huh, doing that sac or sacrificially, come on. When you obey God, see what he approves of. Whatever meets his approval. Remember that? Uh-huh. And so when you give and that that meets his approval, being obedient to the gift, oh, God will multiply the seed that is sown. Oh, okay, God wants you to be like him. Oh, obey him. Do that that meets his approval. And then as you do it, you plant that seed and huh, it'll multiply. It will multiply. Not sometimes. Every time. Oh, yes, it will. Oh, God will do it for you every time. I, I love the word of God. Whatever little bit you give to God, God will multiply it. Yes, yes, yes. Now, second thing I want you to know. God gives cheerfully, and he wants us to be like him. Let's look at the word. 2 Corinthians 9, 6 and 7. It says, remember that the person who plants few seeds will have a small crop. The, but the one who plants many seeds <laughs> will have a large crop. Then it says, God loves a cheerful giver. Uh, one of the lessons that I have learned in ministry is that you cannot outgive God. And if you want to give to God, you got to give it cheerfully. There are times, and I've said it, and I've said it, and I've said it. I've, I've said it at my church at offering time. I said, you know what? If, you, if you're if you grudgingly bringing that money up here, you keep it. And I said that not being arrogant. I say it because it's not going to do you any good to give grudgingly. You can't get the harvest. The, the way you get it is the way you get it back. You're just making it stressful and strainful and hard for you and a struggle for you. And, and all that comes back. And so I'm really helping you out by doing that. But God loves a cheerful giver. So if ever you come around me or you come, oh, yes, or when, when our church and when we're back in the sanctuary, but it don't matter. We are the sanctuary and we still praising God. Let me tell you something. If you start getting happy and joyful about being obedient to what God has given you to do, his approval, what God wants you to do. And sometimes, you know, we say, well, God ain't never told me anything. Uh-uh, it's the things that's good. As you do those good things, uh huh, that God had, that that God wants, you know, He always wants us to help others. He always wants us to do something for others. And whenever you step out and do it, do your best in it, yeah, and give. And God is so good, and so He lets us know right here that He will multiply whatever we give unto Him. Remember, He said the the person who plants few seeds will have a small crop, but the one who plants many seeds. We'll have a large crop. God loves. God loves. God loves the person who gives cheerfully. God loves a cheerful giver. Oh yes, oh yes. And when you find out that 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 as you obey God, oh, oh just down through the years, I have found that you cannot outgive God. 
You get happy. I'm telling you, before you get back home, God will have blessed. Oh, I know. I have the testimony personally. God is such a good God. As you begin to step out on him, do what he said do, and you need to be a blessing. You need to be a blessing to your local church. You need to be a blessing to your local pastor. You need to be a blessing. It is your local church that is sustaining you in this hour. Your local church, your local pastor that is praying for you in this hour. And, and the local church has always been the church that, that seemingly, oh, we've had the mega churches, but today, you know what's going on today? Everybody's got a small church. <laughs> so I, that's why I'm categorized. The local church, that local church is is always planning with you in mind. And now that I'm on all types of streaming and, and, and podcast platforms and all the, the app platforms and, and YouTube platforms and Facebook platforms, now that I'm on all of those, I'm telling you right now, oh, God has now, it, 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 you're my local church. You are my local church. Yes, you are. I am praying for you. I'm believing God for you. Stand in, in agreement with you. And all the testimonies are pouring in of what God is doing for you. And I'm so grateful for it. And, and you know why? Because I'm happy about it. When you get blessed, I'm happy about it. God loves a cheerful giver. Mm. God is so good. Now, now, not only does he love a cheerful giver, let me make another point here right quick. Whatever you give, he takes it multiplied. Uh, you know, I'm just resounding on this, and I'm showing you this. Glory to God. God has told me, down through my times with him, to give a big offering. Huh? And he would tell me to give a big offering. And every time he'd tell me to give this big offering, down through the years, it would be bigger than the last one. <laughs> And God would tell me to give it. Oh, and I'm telling you, and there are many times I had to, there are times that I said, okay, I can do this by planting X number of dollars a month, and I'll have it done. To be obedient to God. Okay, I can do this, I can, I can do this, I can sacrifice this and do it right now. However, God has said, there are times that I had proportionately set it up how I could make it happen. And, oh, before I could finish it, the Lord would tell me, uh-uh, no, get it done now. I'm ready to do something quickly for you. God did that to me. And I tell you, there was a time that God had given me a certain amount and I had it all set up how I was going to get it to my pastor. And God said, no, I want you to do this right now. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm ready to move now. And I tell you, I moved right then. When God tells you to move, it doesn't mean that you know everything is, is hidden in the future. You don't have all of the, the, the dots to connect as to say, oh, yes, I'm giving this because. Uh, no, no, no. Just just because you know it's his approval and you're obeying God. Do you know when I obey God with that? God completely paid off, paid off uh, houses that I own. Completely. I'm telling you, it was mind blowing how God did that thing. Completely paid off rental property that I had. God completely paid it off. God took care of situation. Paid off transportation. God is such a good guy. I mean, did you, do you hear me saying big things? See, when you give big, what did I tell you in the beginning? Begin, God wants you to be just like him because you can't now give him. Oh, yes. But the amount that you give determines the amount that you get back. You can't now give God whatever he tells you to do. Uh, you just do it because when you give, when you give according to how God wants you to give, whatever you give to him, whatever you, when you start, when you start planting into your local church, when you start giving into your local pastor, when you start giving into that, that God, his approval is up on, I'm telling you, he takes it and he multiplies that. Trust that. He multiplies that. Why? Because that's the original soil. That pastor is how that vision started out. Oh, glory. That's the original soil, man. Oh, Mm. Oh, glory to God. And so God began to give me the, the big amounts to give, the big amounts that he wanted me to give. Oh, glory to God. And God, he began to, he always replenished. And when he replenished, it was in greater ways than ever before. Every time, every time, you cannot outgive God. Oh, glory to God. The Bible promises in Luke 18, verses 29 through 30. And I'm going to read it from the message translation. Luke, okay, 18, 29 and 30. It said, you won't regret it. No one who has sacrificed his home, spouse, brothers and sisters, parents, children, whatever, will lose it. It will all come back multiplied plenty of times over 
wait, 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 in your lifetime. Ooh, look how personal this is. And then the bonus of eternal life. <laughs> I enjoy reading the Message Bible. It makes me chuckle. It just, I tell you, I just, it, it fills me. I get so cheerful. Uh, when I read it, and it is the word of God that, that that enables you, motivates you to keep being obedient to the Lord. And so God wants you to know whatever you give to him, whatever you give to your local church, whatever you give to your local pastor, it's going to be multiplied. Whatever you give that meets God's approval and that that he said for you to do, it's going to be multiplied back to you. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I love this. And that's a promise straight from the lips of Jesus Christ. And I love another scripture I read in 1 Corinthians 15 and 58. You can just jot that down. It says, Always give yourself fully to the work of the Lord because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. <laughs> Always give uh, yourself fully to the work of the Lord. Time, talents, treasure. Always give. And you know, we can have it set what we want to do. But God, you know, God doesn't like that. He, well, I won't say he doesn't like. I will say that God God is not a, a saint God. God loves diversity. Look at the colors of the people. Look at the colors of flowers. Look at look at look at how the universe is. God loves diversity. And we can get stuck on the same thing when there's a time that God might want you to increase your tithe. There was a time that God told me when I was not making the amount that I desired to make, when I was working a nine to five before I went into full time ministry, and I said, God, I'm believing you for this amount. And you know. Know what I felt led in my spirit to increase my tithe to the amount that I desired to make. Well, I want you to know God took me up to that amount that I wanted to make. Didn't take a long time either. He did it quickly. Glory to God. God increased. Oh, glory to God. As I as I increased my tithe, God increased and multiplied me. I shared that testimony down through the years, much, much later, after I began a ministry and began pastoring, I want you to know there are members that took that word. And I have one particular member. She didn't testify about it until oh, oh, decades later. But you know what? She said she took that testimony and began to apply it in her life that whenever she wanted increase in promotion, she didn't look to man. She looked to God. And she began to tithe on the amount that she desired her income to be. Oh, my God. And she said every time God would increase her, God would increase her. She didn't share that testimony till she, till she was uh, ready to retire. But you know what? That anointing from that testimony, there were those that were sitting around saying, what, what, what? And they began to operate in it, and God began to do the same thing in their lives. Let me tell you, the anointing of God never dies. And what God does for one, he'll do for the other. If you'll believe God and stand on his word and meet, do that that meets his approval, oh, let me tell you, God will. Oh, you can't outgive God. God will multiply it back to you when you begin to obey him concerning giving and giving into the local church. When you give... Uh-huh, unto him through the local church and through your local pastor. I'm telling you, I'm just preaching the word. I'm preaching the word and it really works. The increase is there. That's why you are there today. Because as you've been giving and planning, you're seeing, you're seeing the results of it in your life as you've connected up here. I don't step back on that. Neither do I hesitate in saying it because I know the anointing up on this ministry. I know the sacrifice that is there. I know the declarations that are being made and how God is moving concerning his word. Word. It's his word. His word does the work. And when you stand on it, believe it, and walk in it, you'll see it come to pass. Huh? Glory to God. You cannot outgive God. Mm -mm. No, you can't. Second Corinthians 9 and 10 says, God gives seed to the farmer. God will also give you seed and multiply it in your lives. Ain't God good? He will increase the things you do that have his approval. That's why throughout you hear me saying about what meets his approval. There in the Good News translation, that's where it say it reads that Second Corinthians nine and ten. See, he'll he'll increase the things you do that have his his approval. In other words, as you fulfill a assignment, God will give you another assignment. God will give you another. God, oh, let me tell you, he'll give you. Another, but he's increasing you. He'll increase the things you do because he wants to increase you. That's the way his system works. You cannot. You can't. 
outgive God. And when you begin to settle this down in your spirit and operate in it, you'll begin to see God increasing you more and more and more and more to the full. Oh, glory to God. Hallelujah. You just think about that. God will increase you when you move in the things of his approval. What's his approval? Well, let's talk about it. You see, God came up with this idea of multiplication. He, he just doesn't want to give you. He wants to multiply in your life. That's my end result that I'm saying to you today. God wants to multiply in your life. God, you know, God increases. His increase is not addition. God's increase is multiplication. Oh, read throughout the Bible. Let, let's just look at a few places there. Because he, God came up with the idea of multiplication. Yes, he did. And you know what? I, I saw it to be true. If you give him your time, He'll give you his time. He'll multiply your time. Oh, yes. I mean, you'll have so much to do, and you'll get it all done. He will multiply your time. You'll see God just stretching things. If you give him your money, he will multiply your money. Oh, glory to God. He multiplies it. If you give him your talent, he multiplies your talent. And you know what else? If you give him your energy, guess what? He multiplies your energy. Oh, glory to God. I'm telling you, when you begin to give your life, give your time, give your energies over to the Lord, he multiplies it. He multiplies it in your life. And it is the same principle of what God does with the seed. Mm -hmm. When you plant seed, he multiplies it. You can't outgive God. Oh, he multiplies it. And every time in scripture that God asks people for anything, it ultimately all worked out for the good to benefit them. Oh, yes, it did. Glory to God. More than anything else, it brought benefits in their lives. And it'll do the same to you because God multiplies whatever you give to him. Jesus fed over 5,000 people. That was that was not including the, the women and the children. So you could easily say it was 15,000 there. But he fed over 5,000 people, had 12 baskets of food left over from two fish and five loaves of bread, listen to this, that was given to him by a little boy. Mm, you can read that account in John, the sixth chapter. Then th think about that widow in First Kings 4. Had, 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 had just a little oil. And the prophet told us, said, go out and borrow vessels and not a few. In other words, you get ready. You're getting ready to see multiplication like never before. Multiplication is coming. Oh, my God, I feel it in the spirit. She went out and my God, God multiplied that also. It paid off her debts and they had enough to live on. Let me tell you, all while everybody else was in famine, she was prospering. Uh, then we look again in 1 Kings, the 17th chapter, where uh, this little lady, the widow of Zarephath, gave all the food that she had to the prophet, gave it all. Uh, mm, mm, mm. Uh, and, 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 and God took that little amount that she had, that little bit that she had, and God fixed it where she never ran out for giving God servant first. Oh, it's a blessing to tithe. It's a blessing to be obedient in the tithe. Oh, glory to God. Then, why? Right, because when you honor God first, mm, and you give God your best, the same's going to come back to you. The best that God has for you. Proverbs 3, 9 and 10 verifies that. Oh, yes. Honor the Lord with your, I'm going to read it uh, from, from another translation. It said, honor the Lord with your wealth. I look at wealth as your time, your talents, and your treasures. You honor the Lord with that that you have that God has given unto you. Honor the Lord with your wealth. And from the first uh, of all your produce, everything that comes into you, you give God, give God of it. You know, I, first thing I wake up in the morning, I'm saying, hello, Father. I, I, I'm telling you, I'm speaking to the Lord. I'm praying. Glory to God. Oh, I'm singing a song. It's something that I'm allowing the first breath that comes out of my mouth to be given to the Lord. Glory to God. When you do that, whoo, God loves it. Oh, he said, what's going to happen? Then that 10th verse, he says, then your barns will be filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with new wine. Oh, plenty, plenty, plenty. You see, uh, the, the, see, the, the new wine, that was symbolic of prosperity. God is saying he'll do a new thing in your prosperity. He'll bring in new money. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> bringing new ideas. <laughs> oh yeah, got to do it for you. Got to br begin to bring it. You'll begin to drive what you never drove, live where you never lived. You'll begin to read the word like you never read the word before. You'll begin to see God doing great and mighty things like never before. Oh yes, new thing, new thing. Oh my God. Ooh, never seen that before. New things that God will do for you. God is new thing. He said, I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into your heart. Oh, you can't even conceive the things that God has what? Already prepared for you. Oh, glory to God. Then that next verse, I love it. He said, but I have revealed them by the Spirit. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, God is so good. You can't, you can't outgive God. You cannot out give God. Whew, glory to God. And then the tithing. Oh, tithing enables you to receive God's abundance. Oh, that's taking you another level now. Tithing enables you to receive God's abundance. You got some tithe that you've been holding back and not releasing. You need to release them. You be It will blow your mind how quickly God will move for you. Tithing releases an abundance. Malachi 3 and 10 said, bring ye the tithe into the storehouse. The storehouse. You think of a storehouse? I'm from the south. They would, they would hang the meats in the storehouse. It would preserve them. And then what they would have them when tough times came or when they desired them. They just had plenty. Oh, yes. Bring ye the tithe into the storehouse. Where are you getting fed from? Mm-hmm. Uh -huh. You're getting fed from here. You need to release your tithe. If you've been holding those tithes up, let the tithe go. Uh huh. Why? So there may be food in my house. So the work of the Lord is free to do that that God would have him to do. And then God said, I love this. Put me to the test now, says the Lord of armies. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> That's Jehovah Sabaoth, <laughs> the God of the angel armies. Oh, glory to God. That ministers assist and protect you. Oh, while you're in obedience to the Lord. Glory to God. He said, if I do not for you, open the windows of heaven and pour out for you a blessing. Oh, I love this. Until it overflows. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's in the message Bible. Oh, glory to God. You can't outgive God. I don't care how generous you think you are. You will never. You will never outgive God. God is the King of kings and the Lord of lords. He's always going to come through. Oh, yes. And what amount that you give determines the amount that he gives back to you. And don't forget what his measure is. His measure is always full. <laughs> Hallelujah. Glory to God, no matter what. And so every good seed, every good seed you plant in your life reaps a harvest far greater. Where did I get that from? Galatians 6, 8 through 10. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. <laughs> Woo! Isn't that good? God multiplies everything you give him. Why? Because you can't, you cannot outgive God. Oh, glory to God. God's not going to let you do it. Oh, glory to God. He's that kind of God. So God wants you to be generous. Why? Because he wants you to be just like him. You can't outgive God. Uh, ooh, glory to God. God wants you to give cheerfully. Oh, why? He wants you to be just like him. You can't outgive God. Oh, yes. God wants you to give unto the local church, unto your local pastor. Why? Because he wants to multiply. Oh, oh, glory to God. He wants to begin to bring such multiplication in your life. Oh, I have not seen, ear have not heard. It hasn't even entered into your heart what God wants to do for you. Woo, glory to God. Why? Because you can't outgive God. He multiplies. Oh, you cannot outgive him. You cannot outgive God. When you learn to be generous like God is generous, he promises that you will always end up with more. Remember that. That's God's economy. Remember that. Don't get sad when somebody else is getting blessed. Get happy. Start flipping that script. Don't get down in the dumps because, oh, they got this. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Pull yourself out of that. 
God is ready to bless you. Get cheerful. Get happy. Oh, hallelujah. Glory to God. You get happy with others and watch God begin to bless you. Oh, as you begin to give, uh huh, your joy and happiness, seeing someone else happy, God will bless you in that as well. And you'll start seeing yourself enabled to do. Oh, it works. It works. It works. You'll be generous. You'll see a generous God. you start planting seeds. You'll start seeing multiplication. you start start giving into your local church and your local local pastor. It'll blow your mind. Your eye have seen, your ear have heard what God will do for you. He will increase you. He will multiply, multiply, multiply. That's what he wants to do. Why? Because you can't out give God. Come on, give God some praise. <laughs> Come on, give him the glory. <laughs> oh, hallelujah. God is a good God. Ooh, I love him today. I love the Lord on today. And you'll see it on the bottom of the screen.